Hey everyone, today we have a guest. It's an actress named Danica McKellar. And she's kind of a big deal to me. She played Winnie Cooper in the TV show The Wonder Years. And if you're of a certain age, she was probably a bit of a childhood crush. She was the girl next door, she was the love interest. She then went on to act in The West Wing, another of my favourite shows. Oh, wow. And these days she stars in romantic TV movies, those kind of wholesome ones you might watch at Christmas. So what's this got to do with Number Filer, here you ask? Well, between The Wonder Years and The West Wing, Danica got a quite impressive math degree from UCLA. She proved a theorem, it bears her name. And although she went back to acting rather than becoming a professional mathematician, she still writes math books like these. They're aimed at young people, especially girls. She's passionate about education reform. She's testified before Congress even. Now, I did a full 45 minute interview with her for the Number File podcast. You can watch the whole thing on the Number File 2 YouTube channel or on your podcast player. Just search for Number File on your podcast player. There'll be links in the description below. But if you want to just watch some of the shorter highlights of the interview, well, that's right now. Thank you for joining us. Um, I was a big Wonder Years fan, like all people my age. I grew up with the Wonder Years, and Winnie Cooper was my girl next door. This is the character that you played in the Wonder Years. So I have to tell you a little story from this year before we start. Okay. My wife bought me a little puppy for Valentine's Day. Aww. It was a surprise and she I, I walked into the lounge room and there it was with a ribbon around its neck. Very cute. And I said, I was quite shocked. It was unplanned. And then I said, oh, that's really cute. And she said, and I've decided we're going to call it Winnie because I know how much you love Winnie Cooper from the Wonder Years. <laughs> so, it's, so our puppy is called, its official name is that, Winnie Cooper. That's so cute. That's adorable. I love that. <laughs> it did make me think though. I have one, I have a Wonder Years question for you. Yes. How do you feel about the name Winnie? Because as an actress, you don't choose characters' names. You you probably weren't to know how amazing the show was going to be and how it would be connected to you for the rest of your life. Right. And I'm sure you're hardly ever introduced in any other way other than Winnie from the Wonder Years. How do you feel about the name Winnie? In her role as Winnie Cooper in the Wonder Years. For six seasons, Danica McKellar starred as Winnie Cooper. Starring that girl from the Wonder Years. She was a child star, best known as Winnie Cooper on the beloved TV hit show, The Wonder Years. Oh, it's adorable. It's so cute. I mean, I'm used to it, of course. Um, you know, in the first episode of The Wonder Years, the idea was that Winnie didn't want to be called Winnie anymore. I wanted to be called Gwendolyn. I don't want to be called Winnie anymore. My real name is Gwendolyn. And uh, of course, that didn't stick. <laughs> but that no. was one of the first things that my character even says in the show is, I don't want to be called, I don't want to be Winnie anymore. But guess what? She stayed Winnie and so did I. First of all, I was not aware of how successful The Wonder Years was to the extent that it was. There's no way. There's one person on set once said, hey, how do you feel about being America's sweetheart? I was like, what? I had no, I just no concept of it until later. So during that, I mean, I, I never had any doubt that I was gonna go to college. And I knew that I just felt like I had a lot of options and I was gonna see and I knew that I loved acting. I didn't know that I would, you know, want to do something more than acting. But when I got to college, I just instinctively knew that I wanted to take a break and explore math because I thought, you know, I'm never gonna like go back later and study math, but I can always go back later to acting. So, and I, and I felt so alive when I was doing these difficult math problems. And I and I needed that that palate cleanser to take me from being so associated with this one very popular show and this thing that child actors go through where there's an insecurity that develops because like, well, what if I didn't, everybody thinks I'm so great because of this one thing. You know, what if I didn't have that? Who would I be? Where would my value be? And so I had to discover what that was on my own. And it was so diametrically different from acting, being a math major and becoming a tutor in, a calculus tutor in the math department and fully immersing myself in that world where I didn't wear makeup, I didn't care what I was wearing. I just put on some t-shirt and jeans and trek across campus and study and be smart. And I, it felt very glamorous to me. So that was perfect and it's what I needed. And even at that time, if you'd asked me, well, is this gonna be your life now? I couldn't have told you. I just knew that that's what I needed to do then. Was any part of you thinking this could be a career? I could be a math professor and in the future or? Potentially. Yeah, it's just that I started really missing performing. And I also missed sharing. 
myself with people because when you become very specialized in math there's a very small number of people who even can understand the things that you're thinking about and that you want to be talking about i couldn't have a conversation with my family about the things i was excited about that i was discovering and that i was helping to prove i couldn't I would have to describe and define every vocabulary word along the way to the point where by the time I finished describing the story didn't even get a chance to get started. And that's, I started feeling a little too detached from everyone. But I love math and I love what math does for your brain. And little did I know that I would be able to find that perfect balance by writing math books because then I could, I could be celebrating what math does for your brain. I could be problem solving. How do I make this fun? How do I make this accessible? And also be entertaining. So my whole thing is making math entertaining. I've got it here. Here we go. I'm holding it in front of me. Percolation and Gibbs states, states multiplicity for, for ferromagnetic Ashton Teller mode. So I have the shays mckellar wynn theorem. Yeah. I'm not a mathematician. And even if I was, I don't know. I don't know if I'd... You know what? It is... It is so specialized that I looked at it recently and I was like, wait, what? It <laughs> was a long time ago. That was 1998. Okay. So this is your, this is your big math. This is your, this is your big contribution to the, the pantheon of mathematics. Can, can you give me, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to explain it, but can you say anything? Yeah. It's a mathematical model of magnetic material basically. And there's two states that we proved had the same critical temperature. Um, above which something would be true and below which something wouldn't be true. And uh, it's something that my professor, Lincoln Shays, had proven a more specific case of. And he told myself and another student, Brandy Wynn, he's like, I think you, know, you guys are like my best students. And I think that this can be proven for a slightly more general case. And so he went through and taught us everything we needed to know for how what he had done with his paper. And then he is like, okay, and here, go like here, here's where dig over here try this stuff and we'd work and i remember brandy and i would beat each other's houses from it was like 11 a.m to 11 p.m every single day for that summer at the chalkboard at the chalkboard for sure and when we were at my house and we would go to her house we'd go back and forth and it was such a fun summer it really was we we had such a great time and then we'd bring our findings to the professor about once a week and he's like hmm okay well this you're making progress over here but try this over here instead and we'd and then we'd go back to work and uh, eventually we, we proved it. But, you know, proving theorem is not like a scientific discovery because you think you've proven it. You're like, oh, there's a case we didn't think of. There's a loophole. And then you try, oh, yeah, not quite. And then and then you don't find any mistakes. You don't find any mistakes. You're like, I, okay, I, maybe this is it. And you show it to other people. And they don't find any mistakes. Okay. And then eventually you send it to a journal and then... They don't find any reason, but this is months and months. And they're like, I guess we proved it. <laughs> there's, there's no like, eat gods. But, but you have a lot of those moments when you think of a new way to try. And that's fun in itself. You're like, oh wait, this is an interesting method. So you have a lot of those little moments, but it's not like one big ta-da. Do you know it's one of the cruel ironies of the Wonder Years that perhaps close to one of my favorite episodes is an episode I don't believe you are in. And it's the mathematics episode with the math teacher and Kevin. What a great episode that was. I know. There are two of them. There's the one where he, the teacher helps him, right? And the next, wasn't there? And then the one where he dies. Not your friend, Mr. Arnold. Your teacher. But that is, that is, that is an episode I have gone back to, like, as an adult a few times. And, uh, yeah, ironic that, you, that it's one that you didn't participate in and you're the, you were the mathematician in the cast, so. Right, right. Although there was that one episode where I do better on the SATs than Kevin did. Yes. I got a yes. higher math score. They, they did put and that in. And you didn't want to tell him. And you didn't want to tell him. And that's, like, that's so what you're about on brand for you that's exactly the problem early you're early about. 70s yeah i don't think it's such a good idea to talk about them like this they're kind of private well i do tell him i just hesitate because i know he's yeah i feel bad yeah 725 verbal 757 math somehow i skipped that's wonderful and i'm so proud of you and cut right to the bottom line that's a 1481 but that's just a number Besides, it's a fortune 82. Danica McKellar, Winnie from the Wonder Years. I can't believe I spoke to Winnie from the Wonder Years. Amazing. And I spoke to her about mathematics. You sure did. <laughs> and in all that time, you never felt like telling me you were smart? 
Kevin, you knew I was smart. In the fourth grade, I knew you were good at math, okay? I didn't know you were some kind of Einstein or someone. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder again, the longer 45 minute version of this interview, you can watch that on the Number File 2 YouTube channel, or you can listen to it as a podcast, search for the Number File podcast. And if you've never heard of the Number File podcast, please do go and listen. There are loads of interviews with famous mathematicians, people you know from Number File, all sorts of people, an NFL footballer, even a prison inmate. Check it out, there'll be links below. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon. And don't forget to check out Danica's books. McKellamath.com, there'll be a link below. Wow.